previously on OMG, we bought a house. It's actually a lot of pressure. We're spending more money and more time than we had hoped. I said, picture this, not argue with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joey, that's not nice. And today on OMG, we bought a house. We passed inspection. This is what you've been watching for, okay? This with some like cute, nice hand towels. Like, Are you I'm not from Joey, I'm from ah. right. Oh, you're Rainbow Bright. We actually love this. <laughs> I'm just seeing like broken coasters and cheap lights, but you know, trust Mr. King. Woo, hello, welcome back everybody. I am here to tell you that we are still renovating. <laughs> In case you were wondering, it's still happening and we have a lot to share with you today. It's been a minute since we've shared from our Hawaii house update renovation stuff because we've been going over to other people's homes. Creative weirdos here in Hawaii have been reaching out and we have been decorating for them and it has been so fun. So if you haven't seen those videos, check them out. Such feel good stories and of course, gorgeous makeovers with some DIYs that I'm so proud of. And also speaking of DIYs, today's video we have some that are big, big time for us because they saved us some big money. So I'm excited to share this with you. Let's do it. Can't wait to renovate. There's no time to go on dates. How will it turn out? OMG, we, we bought a house. On an island? Wait, what? It's our dream home. Hopefully. Mom, show me that door. Coming. So much has happened with this Ohana guest house since we started renovating. Let me just catch you up real quick, okay? So, first it started out looking like this. Okay, cockroaches were living there. Here's the moment. <laughs> That is not the Ohana, the family that we want to welcome. Thank you. So, we totally got it though. Then we encountered that we had to replace the sewer line, which was an added cost we weren't prepared for, so that means we might have to put my desire to change the roof on hold. But just on hold, okay, it's still gonna happen. And then we reframed, added new doors and windows, put in some gorgeous faux beams in the main living area. We went and picked out some prefabricated cabinets and countertops, which are gonna look amazing and upscale, just you wait. We laid down the nice wide plank floor and decided on all the wiring for the house where all of our lights are gonna go. The jewelry of the room, the bling, the eyeballs. <laughs> Am I trying out a new space bun, do? <laughs> space Age Mini? Okay, anyways, these are sconce bulbs. As I've been shopping for lighting, guys, lighting, I love lighting, it's a moment. The jewelry of the room, as I call it. But it's also really pricey if you want something statement making. So of course, did I see a DIY opportunity? Oh <laughs> yeah. I did. These are the sconces that I wanna go in the living room. And then these are gonna go in the kitchen over the backsplash. I'm gonna be using a variety of cheaper fixtures for this space that the shapes are nice, but the finishes kinda clash, the brasses don't work together. So I am going to take it as an opportunity to DIY them, make them look more elevated and expensive and just more bespoke and artsy. So these I thought, were like a cool shape, but this just like huge patch of this goldy metal color is not what I want. When I was shopping for sconces, there's so many gorgeous ones with stone and have the stone backing the light and oh, they were so expensive. These are from Little Amazon, a twofer, right? So much cheaper than the other statement making sconces I was looking at. So I'm gonna show you a quick DIY technique to make a plain looking sconce a beautiful art piece. And I'm gonna show you guys a really cool DIY with these sconces that I think is gonna look so good, like one of those high-end stone sconces. And are you ready to see what source my stone is gonna be? <laughs> the most budget-friendly travertine stone I could find is a set of travertine coasters. First step to painting these to become a statement is to prime them. So I'm using the Zinsser 123 because you can paint metal. So I think I want to leave the metal here and here. 
So I kind of like that peeking out. So I can't really see that. you're gonna be able to see that from the side. Why? You're gonna be able to see that. How would you be on the side of those concerts though? It's on the wall. Or if you're underneath, sitting on the couch, looking up at them. Do what you want the to. details are important. I'm just masking off the metal parts that I want to keep. Obviously, I don't want to get any paint into the electrical components. Okay, so in order to create my very upscale looking, cool, bespoke stone sconces, I need stone. These are inexpensive travertine coasters. I got a set of round ones and a set of these, like, they call it toast <laughs> for, I guess, obvious reasons. I'm gonna put them in plastic bag, use a hammer, and see what smaller shapes I can get because I want kind of like a, you know, like a this. I'm not looking for a ton of tiny little pieces here. I'd rather have some medium sized or regular chunks that I can puzzle together. The size will complement the globe. It'll have kind of a postmodern look and there's enough surface area to adhere them to the base. Now I'm just gonna try to puzzle it together. This light still has to be functional, so I'm not gonna cover up these little side screws that are part of the mounting process. And also I have the globe already screwed on to make sure that as I fit these in, it's still can screw on. Wait, 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 this is looking so cool. We actually love this. <laughs> okay, 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 let me tell you why I love this. Can I tell you why I love this? Joey? Sure. Are you listening? I'm listening, yes. Okay, I want like that subtle influence of like the environment around us, right? Doesn't this look kind of like shell-like in a way? Like, look how cool that looks. This is like a $30 sconce. I could charge $280. Kate has the ability of seeing things like completely out of context. I'm just seeing like broken coasters and cheap lights. But, you know, as the saying goes here, trust Mr. Kate. I'm using a max strength Gorilla Glue that is meant to adhere stone to metal, but you could try to use something like an E6000. I just really wanted the best adhesion here to make sure that when they go horizontal on the wall, we don't have any rogue travertine pieces bonking anyone in the head while they're washing dishes. That is not the bespoke poke we're looking for. <laughs> I... I'm very happy with these. Okay, so the glue takes 24 hours to cure. So I'm hesitant to do this, but just so you guys can see how cool. Something that I have decided while gazing at these is that I wanna go a step further with some paint. Probably could have done this as a step before gluing them on, but I'm gonna go in with some of my little brushes and mix a color that's close to this and then just fill in anywhere where you see like really obvious bits of the metallic sticking through. And I'm gonna mix it with some baking powder. You can use baking soda or baking powder. Basically it just thickens the paint, gives it a more matte finish and also gives it a little bit of that ceramic finish too. So that'll be the next step. <laughs> on the columns. We're doing a bunch of hacks in this place to try to elevate the look of everything without elevating the budget of everything. You guys saw in the living room, we did this with the beams in the ceiling where we wrapped the trusses in wood that we had sandblasted to make it look like there's some like really old school, nice weathered beams in there, but they're fake. And we're doing the same thing on the columns. So before we just had these like red brick columns, nothing to write home about, and we're gonna actually dress them up as if they were made out of coral rock. Obviously it would be a ton of money to actually replace them with columns made out of coral rock. So this is a really cool hack. It's just cement pieces sort of poured in a regular flat shape and then sponged on paint to sort of give it that texture look as if they were natural rocks. And then you can just glue them up around the whole column. And even, you know, they come in like corner pieces. 
So you can actually do like corner wrapping and we can just wrap the entire column and it's gonna give the appearance as if we had made these columns out of solid rock, but they're actually not and they're way less expensive. Oh, this looks so good in here. Look at this next to this beautiful color. Our finish is coming together. We've got electricity in here. So this is a thing that people do, right? You take a cool old vintage piece of furniture and you augment it to be a vanity. We found this on Facebook Marketplace for, I wanna say it was only like 160 bucks, right? Less than that. You think? I mean, look at this piece. It's a real vintage piece. It's called a baker's table. You put your dough down in there. I know, doesn't it look like you probably put your dough down in there? This hardware is so cool. We're just positioning the sink right now where we want it, making sure it's, you know, obviously centered, but also in a good spot underneath the faucet, which is now fully installed. So I think this looks good. We'll do this a piece more. of furniture with some like cute, nice hand towels, like real towels, like kind of folded on top is gonna be so cute. Are you styling already? <laughs> Joey, who is this Joey? You have to cut this thing open and you're talking to me about hand towels? <laughs> we got our skylight in. Yeah. We're gonna put shelves Floaty here shelves. for like towels and whatnot. This was access from our backsplash mm -hmm. from our counters. Our nice fancy uh, schmancy dimmers. We're gonna do an oil-based sealer on the top of this because I think that this was probably oil-based stain originally since it's such an old piece. So putting oil over oil is a better idea, especially in an area where it is gonna get droplets of water on it. If we put a water base over an oil stain, it would also peel more easily. Gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna cut the hole. Okay. This cute little bathroom's gonna be cute. It's so cute. Ta -da 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 -da. So, sink's good. As you can see, I drew out a hole through the supports and the drain actually fits in there. I'm gonna add some reinforcement across here and on this side, but the good news is the bottom drawers clear so they can stay in. I'm gonna get the plumbing in first and then once we have that in place, I'll put the top drawers in last because I can sort of configure them around the plumbing. So now that I have all my stuff cut, I'm going to put a coat of poly on it and we should be good. All right, so for this baker's table, I'm just gonna go over it and sand it lightly, but I don't wanna take off the finish because that finish just looks aged and cool. And I'm okay with a lot of the little stains and whatever, but you know, just taking off that first layer of junk. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and put several coats of like a spar urethane on top of it, which is an oil-based sealant that will basically help protect it from any water that might splash onto it from the sink. It's time I shared my story with you. Okay, let's go. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Kate. You may have seen me on YouTube over the past decade doing creative projects, making a name for myself, being an interior designer for all of your favorite YouTubers. <laughs> but I had just one big idea that we could not get off the ground. I learned by doing hundreds of room makeovers with all kinds of budgets, some of them being as low as $300, that the biggest question always was, why is affordable furniture so ugly? Every time I told people I wanted to create a Mr. Kate furniture line, I kept being met with, no, you can't do that, you're just a YouTuber. While the no's were discouraging, I didn't let them stop me, and I can't believe I'm saying this now, but our furniture line is one of the fastest selling furniture brands on Amazon, our Daphne bed has sold out over 10 times, our sofas have won awards for design and comfort, and we're working on our fifth collection. Ah! So take it from me and never accept no as an answer to your dreams, and never set your cute butt on an ugly couch again. Okay, our Zinzer one, two, three is dry. So here's like the inspo. Pulled some of these green stone. I really like these tones of green. Or oh, ooh, that's pretty. That's kind of like a marble. So you're basically trying to make these turn into like a stone vibe? I don't know, just like reminiscent of something more natural. And creating stone with acrylic paint and just a few different size paintbrushes is actually really easy. You just gotta paint in layers. And when I bought all my variety of brushes here, is this one is definitely a blush brush that Moon probably put in there, one of my makeup brushes. 
This painting process is so forgiving. I'm using a variety of acrylic paints for this. These are just acrylic craft paints, mixing together my own colors, which I like to do, especially when I'm doing a green that I want to look like comes from the earth. If it's too bright, it's just going to be too in your face. So I'm adding some gray, some brown, some black to just soften them a little bit. I also have some white and some cream on hand. I'm using a big brush to layer on this base color. The more variation in color you have, the more natural stone it's gonna look. If you look at a beautiful piece of natural stone, it's not like it's all unified one color. There's so many gorgeous color variations within there naturally. Now it's time to go in with a stipple brush for the next layer. I'm actually going to use this blush brush that Moon put in my paint brushes because it's perfect. It has some texture to it, and I'm just stippling on some various shades of green over this. Here is where you can kind of create a little bit of highlight Light, a little bit of low light and a little bit of contour if you will. Now that my second layer is dry I'm going to go in with the smallest little brush I can find to add the veins of the stone. You don't want to be perfect with these lines. The more erratic almost shaky you are with your hand the better these veins are gonna look. This is a forgiving process because if you make a vein you don't really like just go in with one of your base colors again and like almost just like erase it. I found that this brush that has a really long, very thin tendril, nearly like a lock of hair, was the easiest way to get those hair-like strokes. These are all dry. Final step, I'm going to do a gloss polyurethane. Just kind of give it like a shiny top coat, make it look a little more stone-like. I need to do one more step on these travertine sconces. I really like the vibe of how they turned out, but I don't love that I can still see the little gaps between the pieces on the base. So I'm using this polymer clay and I'm just using little pieces of it to press in between to really fill in those gaps. And then I'm going to paint over it with a travertine color. And I just think this makes it look that much more custom and well-made. different colors to get to this color because even if you have one that you think maybe it's similar you might need to add undertones of peachy or give it a little more green hue it's kind of like when you're editing a photo okay moment of truth Ooh! I'm pretty stunned at how quickly and effortlessly Kate painted those sconces and made them look awesome. Like, she's pretty special. <laughs> Joey? Yeah. Um, first of all. I'm not Joey, I'm Rainbow Bright. Oh, you're Rainbow Bright. You want to give us a tour of, of the construction now that you're, you're fully dressed? Follow me. Oh my gosh, look at these columns. This is actually the perfect time to show you guys because it is getting to be dusk. I'm really glad that Joey's in this outfit to just juxtapose <laughs> with the way that your cape is blowing in the breeze. So look at these cute little lights. What's on your toes? <sighs> my toe spreader, Joey. Bunion. Oh. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Aren't these lights so pretty? These are on a uh, low voltage timer. So basically these stay on all the time in the evening. Yeah, which is so nice. Ooh, look at the outdoor sconces. Oh my gosh, look at the shelf lighting. This is how the crew has styled our shelf. Washer and dryer are coming tomorrow. No way. So we can do our laundry room. This is the countertop for the laundry room. Ooh, it's so pretty. 
I love how these light fixtures turned out. I think they're just gonna all play together so well, and I cannot wait to pull together this kitchen and this living room, guys. We have some epic reveals coming at you. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Love you so much. Bye. Bye. I tried something new with my eyeliner, okay? I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> Thank you.